For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic. Before the dark times. Before the Empire. Yeah, but I just want to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. No, Luke. You must listen to the entire history of the Jedi Order. But I've really got to go check on these moisture evaporators because Uncle Owen said that I had to. Oh my god, you're so annoying. Okay, fine. Darth Vader is your father and he killed your mother. No! That's impossible! No, it's quite probable because as you and the people of listening to this podcast are going to learn, this geek history lesson is now about the Jedi Order. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Obi-Wan, got a blue lightsaber in me. Welcome (laughs) to your mind order, the mind temple now, as we walk into the halls of a galaxy far, far away to tell you about a character, or in this case, a group of pop culture that's going to star in a very famous movie very, 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 very soon. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, Geek History Lesson, thank you. Today's lesson, of course, is about the Jedi Order. And Strap a, it. Yes. Now, Ashley, you are the professor of this lesson. I am. So, this is a giant summary of all the stuff. We need some caveats yeah, on this. Yeah, so here's... Okay. There are many caveats. Okay. Uh, first caveat, I might pronounce things wrong. Great. Uh, so, please be kind about that. All right. Uh, second caveat... The Jedi history is incredibly long and incredibly convoluted. And J.J. Abrams threw all this history out. Right. So is that another caveat? I'm sorry if I just that. That's the third caveat. The third caveat is is that none of this is in canon. Is that none of this is in canon, official canon anymore. Um, but it is all very fascinating. So I, after many hours, um, tried to pick what I thought were the most important statements and landmarks about mm. the Jedi Order through its history. I've kind of broken it up into three different sections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and There's going to be stuff that people think is cool that I didn't have time to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And again, we want to we want to stress that again because we we thought that we definitely wanted to do a Star Wars lesson. Mm-hmm. And we thought, well, you could do the Darth Vader lesson. You could do the Han Solo lesson. But, but everybody's seen those movies. Yeah, and besides the six movies... What can you do? We can't do anything in the future because as the time of this recording, we have not seen The Force Awakens. We have not. So we don't know what is going to be changed. And even though J.J. Abrams threw it all out, he can't throw all, all of, of it, it out. So it's there's still some interesting pieces. There's still some interesting bits. And you know what? Your continuity is what you make of it. So if you like anything we tell you today, hey, it's cool. Exactly. We all, all right. build our own continuity. Yep. So uh, let's move right into the Tencent origin. Jason, can you tell us what that is? The Tencent origin is the part of the podcast where we tell you in some few little sentences or cliff notes what this podcast is about. Mm -hmm. So the Jedi Order was created by George Lucas, a very famous filmmaker that you may have heard about. They first appeared in A New Hope, which came out in 1977. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke Skywalker, Yoda, and Leia Organa are all representatives of the Force-sensitive Jedi that we will learn more about. Obi-Wan Kenobi has described the Jedi as guardians of peace and justice, uh, like Jason quoted earlier, during A New Hope. That's kind of a really good way to think about it. The Jedi Order is largely made up of polymaths. What are polymaths? Wait, 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 wait. What's a polymath? A polymath is an expert in a variety of different disciplines and subject matters as opposed to just a master of a single thing. Whoa, whoa, you're throwing out complicated words here and I just wanted to learn about the Jedi. Right, but they tend to be made up of teachers, philosophers, scientists, physicians, diplomats, and warriors who value knowledge above nationality. Okay. So Interesting. There's a lot of different alien species. We're only going to touch on really a couple of them. Humans are obviously one of them. Um, So the Jedi, they're, they're a diverse group and their traditional weapon is a lightsaber, which they build during their training which we will talk about later okay we're gonna talk a lot about the training later yes and the lightsaber so that's your 10 cent origin on the jedi they're space monks Woo! <laughs> and next next part of our section is the meet cute which i think is going to be pretty obvious yeah uh, this is the part of the podcast where we talk about where we first encountered this character or section yes ashley where did you first encounter the jedi uh i first saw a new hope in uh episode four uh in 1998 when i was eight years old wow yeah 
I think I first saw it on AB, the ABC Sunday Night Movie in like 1980 <laughs> something. <laughs> well, I wasn't alive in 1980 something. So, so there you go. Yeah, my, uh, we rented them, which I thought was really cool. Cool. I watched them when they were still being broadcast on television. So okay, let's move on to the main meat of the section because Meat Cute was very short. Yeah, and very obvious. We met the Jedi in the Star Wars movies. So the History 101 section that we're now in is the main meat of the lesson where Ashley, Professor Ashley, is going to tell you all about the Jedi. All right. Caveat. Okay, caveat. Uh, Jedi history is largely broken up into three different sections. Uh, the jedi E, which we'll start with. The, well, okay. The old Jedi Order and okay. the new Jedi Order. The new Jedi Order is all Luke Skywalker onward. Which we're not going to touch. We're not going to touch that. Because of Force Awakens. Because of Force Awakens. It's going to retcon that. Da, 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 Got da. It. We're going to focus mainly on everything that happens before A New Hope. Got it. And then in between the two different sections, we're going to talk about um, contemporary training and lightsaber building. Great. So just so you know, that's the structure that one we're going for. All right, let's do it. So there is a book that exists called Star Wars Young Jedi Knights, colon, lightsabers. Colon lightsabers. During colon lightsabers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> during which Luke Skywalker, kind of our formidable Jedi, um, describes the Jedi Order like this. Remember, a Jedi fights only as a last resort. If you are forced to draw your lightsaber, you have already forfeited much of your advantage. A Jedi trusts the Force at the f and at first seeks other ways to resolve problems. Patience, logic, tolerance, attentive listening, negotiation, persuasion, calming techniques. But there are times where a Jedi must fight. So kind of the most important thing you need to know about Jedi is they're, they're pacifists. Yeah, the lightsaber is the, the last resort. Yeah, but yes. also the coolest resort. Well, it looks cool, man. Laser sword, yo. Um, and, yeah. and, and this idea of, of being pacifists and kind of trying to work things out through negotiation carries through all of Jedi history, which you'll see changes a lot from its inception. Okay. So, all right. um, originally, this order, I'm saying jedi E to help distinguish between the two um, different eras we're going to talk about. Why E? Because it is spelled J-E apostrophe D-A-I-I. Oh, weird. Okay. And in traditional Latin pronunciation, which carries over into English pronunciation, that would be pronounced E oh, you instead got, of like I-I. You guys got like a Latin lesson. Holy cow. Look yeah. at that. All right. So cool. I'm going to call them the, that. the Jedi E because the Jedi -E, again, it. for my own sake and for the listener's uh -huh. sake, it'll help you kind of, those were the ancient Jedi. Yeah, that's fine. That's totally cool. Go for it. So they were originally formed on a planet called Tython, T-Y-T-H-O-N, from the Tython system, a verdant world rich in the force. It is the richest planet in the force. It's the, it's the, it's the planet with the most force. With the most force. With All the right. most force sensitive people. Yo, baby, we got the force more than any of those planets. And the Jedi E were originally constructed as a philosophical study group. <laughs> they, they, they were, were a think tank. They were a book club? They were a book club. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the original Jedi E is a man named uh, Ketu, Ketu, K-E-T-U. And he described this early order as... In the light, there is a darkness, and in the darkness, a light. It is the way with all of us. Be a prisoner of neither Bogan nor Ashla. Strive to live in balance. As Tython itself teaches us, it is dangerous to do otherwise, and it is dangerous to live there always. So they were unified in their belief in the Force. Okay. The Force is the energy that unites all things and is broken up into two aspects, the Ashla and the Bogan. It is an energy source that penetrates us and binds us and brings us together. Exactly. The Ashla is the light side of the Force and the Bogan is the dark side of the Force. It's so interesting to hear the names for these things that we've always liked, like the light side, the dark side. Yeah. Um, obviously, those terms are dropped later on, but okay. I just thought it was interesting that this was what the original called. I also think it's interesting that it's an A word and a B word, your first two letters of the alphabet, to kind of, you know, oh, interesting. Okay. tell the difference between the light in the dark. Um, Typhon uh, created balance between these two aspects. And the, so the Jedi who lived on Typhon, who were force sensitive, um, for the most part, kind of fell into this middle ground of where the Jedi are, where they were very, they were neither light nor dark. And when they started to, when, when, when Jedi followers started to either favor the light or the dark, they were sent away into exile to meditate and could only return to the temples when they returned to balance. Oh, okay. So, like so a, they were neither Jedi nor Sith. So if one guy was like, oh man, I'm so into like this moving X-Wings array, they were like, get the Get out of here! Yeah, yeah. Walk, walk away. You know, and whereas the um, and then the, the guys are like, hey, hey, look, lightning, <laughs> look, lightning. They were like, go think about what get, you've done. Look, do we need lightning? No. 
but, but they were allowed to come back. It was a very forgiving order, which is something that kind of gets lost later on, which I think I think is interesting. The Jedi E eventually grew to inhabit nine temples on the planet Tython, and each pres- were presided over by a Jedi E temple master. Okay, which was kind of the first distinction between student and master. Got it. In order to gain mastery of the Force, Jedi E were expected to travel between the nine temples, learning and perfecting different skills, like ancient monks used to do. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, or like ancient martial artists. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like an airbender. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that like was Aang the Avatar. Exactly. Yes. And the temple masters made up a council of masters that moderated important issues and maintained the balance of the Force, just like the Council of the Jedi that we'll see later on. Okay, um. Uh, the Jedi existed isolated on Tython for millennia. Here's the other thing. So they didn't talk to a lot of people. They, Interesting. They okay. didn't. I'm not going to give you exact years because they're really hard to find. Okay. So, so there's a lot of times where it's going to be like millennia past well, or that, centuries that's past. That's true to the course for even the movies. It's also true to the course of human history. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So, so years are meaningless. Yeah. All so, right. But so for millennia, for thousands of years, the Jedi live in in peace in relative peace and harmony well good going guys until oh crap a force hound arrived from the rakatan infinite empire a force hound what's a force hound what is a force hound a force hound is a force sensitive servant covered in tattoos on their face and body that hunt down other force sensitive people mm, that sounds like a sith lord that we met uh millennia 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 year later yes <laughs> um and what's the rakatan infinite empire well Ashley, what's the Rakatan <laughs> Infinite Empire? It's the first known major galactic movement founded by Rakata, a scientifically advanced species bent on conquering other races, specifically humans and sand people. Oh, those guys. They were just like, humans and sand people, come be our slaves. T- the Tuscan Raiders. All yeah. right, cool. All right. I, I mean... Uh, that was a very specific note that I kept finding over and over again, and I was like, I guess you want to conquer the sand people. They're sure. not that interesting. Yeah, you know, they just like Banthas. It's all good. Yeah, so following the Force Hound's arrival on Tython, the Jedi were shaken, and a bloody civil war tore them apart. Oh, no. This was known as the first battle between the light and the dark side of the Force, it's kind of all downhill from there. There's going to be a lot of wars between yeah, the light they, and the they dark have, they side. Have, they, they're, they're not a very forgiven bunch, the they're Jedi's. They're not. They're, they hold, the Jedi's hold a grudge. They like to say they are, but they're not. A group of Jedi fled Tython following this and set up a base on a planet called Osis, which is a planet in I've the outer, outer rim territory. Yeah, I've heard of Osis in some of the video games and, and other books and stuff. Some of the stuff that we're going to get towards now, you will have heard about in places like Knights of the Old Republic or okay, any cool. kind of, of like the Thawne stuff. Um, so again, if you know how to pronounce them, let me know. Um, so they, they get to Osis where they eventually joined the Galactic Republic when it sprung up and became the defenders of the peace. Cool. And that is the end of the Jedi E and the beginning of the Jedi. Okay. So that is all the that is your ancient Jedi. So now history. is the start of what we would call the Jedi Order. Yes. Okay. Um so before we get to that, we're going to talk about what Jedi training. Okay, was. interesting. Okay. Um because Jedi training kind of as is Jedi training in the Jedi Order. Yes. Got as it. as you understand it and as it is depicted in um in the, the, in the movies. Yeah. Um and, and in the TV shows really comes into play around this time. It's different in the Jedi time. Of course. Which is why we didn't talk about it. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to move on. Uh, So, what is Jedi training? Yeah, what's Jedi training? If I want to become a Jedi, what do I got to do? Well, you've got to hope that you're born Force-sensitive. Oh, well, crap. I'm already out. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, young Force-sensitive people are taken from their families around the age of three or four. Oh, no. To live and train in the Jedi temples. These Force-sensitive people are known as younglings. Oh, okay. Little baby Jedis. Younglings. And uh, the younglings are broken up into different clans, and they are instructed by a venerable Jedi master, usually somebody like a Yoda or a Mace Windu character, someone who's been a master for a long time, who's had lots of successful Padawans, and who's served on the Jedi Council. Got it. Uh, they tend to be men. Uh, when younglings... <laughs> thanks, George Lucas. Yay. <laughs> when, uh, and that one girl who looks like Ahsoka. <laughs> when younglings graduate... Um, Around around puberty, yep. uh, to initiate status, they are moved to Coruscant. Later on, they're moved to Yavin Four, but oh. uh, but during this time, they move to Coruscant. Okay, okay, okay. But they could be at, like because there's Jedi temples all over. Yeah, not just on Coruscant. Not just on Coruscant, but when you get to be an initiate, you go to Coruscant, or later on, you go to Yavin Four. Got it. To the established Jedi is headquarters. The Yavin Four is that the Luke stuff? It is. Yeah, well, let's ignore. Yeah. That. Um, okay. 
But just I, for anyone who was interested. I always like that. But yeah, yeah. We'll move on. That, um, that's no longer canon. Because Coruscant had the established Jedi headquarters. Yeah, that we see. Uh, that we see prequels. repeatedly yep. in the prequels. Um, so you kind of you go there for further instruction. When the initiates achieve satisfactory understanding of the Jedi way, uh, kind of as deemed by whoever, yep. uh, by their masters, they get to become a Padawan. Oh, and they... when you're a Padawan, you are taken under the wing of a Jedi master and, and you... instructed individually to complete your training. And you get a rat tail and a long braid. Barf. Yep. Padawans join their masters on uh, missions. And eventually they get to the point where they're sent on missions of their own. And that's kind of a cue that you are completing your Padawan training is when you're allowed to go off and do stuff on your own. For a long time, it was common practice um, in the Jedi that if you were not promoted to Padawan by the age of 13... You're kicked out. You would move. Well, you weren't kicked out. It's, oh. Exactly. You were moved into a public service sector for for force sensitive people, um, especially the Jedi Service Corps. So okay. you're kind of like Jedi Light. So is it like that librarian we see in Attack of the Clones? Exactly. Oh, okay, got it. Um, and this actually happened to Obi Wan Kenobi until Qui Gon Jinn I know. accepted him as a Padawan. I know because I've read those books. Uh, Star Star Wars <laughs> Jedi Apprentice by Scholastic. Yes, I'm a nerd. Yeah. Because my favorite Star Wars character is Obi Wan Kenobi, and I read those books. Yeah, he got kicked out. He didn't. He could. He didn't make it in time, and he. He, I, if I remember right, and again, it's going memory. I don't know if you're going to cover anything. I'm not. Okay. Uh, he he sneaks after Qui Gon and proves himself to Qui Gon, and that's why Qui Gon makes him take him. Um, which is something that I'm not a huge fan of all the, of of a lot of the prequel stuff, and I'm not a huge fan of Qui Gon Jinn. But I think it is very fascinating because um, Obi Wan as a master takes a lot of non conventional approaches to both Anakin and Luke. And I always thought of Obi Wan Kenobi as kind of your tr- Jedi traditionalist, By but looks. he's but he's yep. not. Yeah, he had a very um, unorthodox upbringing in the Jedi way, and I think that's very fascinating. Uh-huh. So that's why I wanted to mention. He's very it. accept. He's weird. He's very accepting, but like it, it's weird because it, it's you can definitely tell when he when he when he taps into Yoda, and you can definitely tell when he taps into Qui Gon. Yes. Um. So fun fact about Obi Wan Kenobi. There you go. All right, back to the old uh, stuff. lightsabers. Trading. Let's talk about lightsabers. Okay. What are those? Um. Fun fact. The first lightsabers were called Force Sabers. Yeah. And they were created with crystals and alchemy, and they were actually perfected by the Sith. <laughs> So um, they, they knew how to make the lightsabers better. They're like, look, Jedi, we got laser swords. And Jedi's like, we got to get on that. Yeah. So we gotta, um, we, guys, we, we look at those things. <laughs> uh, for more on that, request an episode about the Sith. Because <laughs> we obviously we're going to talk about the we're Sith not gonna, because of the balance in the force. But we're not going, in, we're not going we're, into that very we're much. We're not going to reveal the secrets of the Sith. Well, here, the or form, the lightsabers uh, until until we talk about this because they're they're dirty Sith weapons. I just think it's fascinating again that like this was an aspect that was perfected by the Sith, but has become such a defining of the Jedi. tool of the Jedi. Yep. Um, building a lightsaber is one of the final trials that an initiate undergoes before they graduate to Padawan status. Oh, I th- okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. They did, they, so building the lightsaber is not from from Padawan the Jedi Knight. Not necessarily. This this fluctuates when this happens. Got it. But traditionally. Um, it is the thing that made you a Padawan because okay, you didn't cool. get to fight with a lightsaber. They had practice lightsabers that are made of like wood. Yeah. Um. You know, kind of like kind of like a a wooden katana that the um. Uh-huh. I, you know, samurai used. Yep, got it. <laughs> that was really hard. I didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking. Um, I was like, is that a Star Wars name? I don't know. So later on, it becomes the thing that that takes a Padawan to being a Jedi mass, a Jedi Knight. Got it. Um. But sometime in their training, usually, but somewhere in the either the initiate or the Padawan phase. You're gonna be uh, you're gonna be building a lightsaber. Cool. And um, the initiates or the Padawans build lightsabers with crystals that are provided to them by their masters, specifically to um, enhance different aspects of who they are as a Jedi, like parts of their personality, parts of their skill set. So that's why every not only is every lightsaber different because it is built by a different Jedi, it is different because of the material and the crystals and what they harness within them. Yep. So I think that's really neat, including the colors. Yeah. Um, if you are confused, don't worry. We're going to take a pause now. We and then are? we're going to go back to the Jedi history. Why are we going to take a pause? We're going to take a pause because we need to appeal to our fan base to help us build up the Jedi Temple here at the Mind University. Oh, that's right. Because if you don't know, over here on Geek History Lesson, we have a Patreon. What? Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. And that's where you can get all kinds of extra perks and help us with our server costs and all the stuff that keeps the Mind University or the Mind Order for this episode going. Even $1 makes 
a huge difference. And you get a lot of stuff like at the three dollar level, you get a geek history lesson episode extra. What? Well, I mean, you don't get it extra. I'm sorry, apologies. You get it early. What? And then for the five dollar level, you get a uh, geek history lesson extra, which is a podcast that is exclusive to our Patreon, and it's where we talk about more stuff. Like this episode, we'll talk more about the Jedi. Yes, we will. We're going to so, talk a lot about which Jedi we like. Oh, so patreoncom slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Every little dollar helps keep the Mind University open, even in a galaxy far, far away. It helps us collect crystals so that we can build our lightsabers. So now we're going to continue with the history lesson because you kind of understand how Jedi training works. Okay, we kind of get it. I kind of get it now. Uh, now we're going to enter this part that is known as the Jedi Order. The it actual is, Jedi. It is, yes. It is later known as the Old Jedi Order or the Holy Order of Jedi Knights, kind of depending on who you're talking to. Understood. Uh, this is the Jedi Order that characters like Obi-Wan, Anakin Skywalker, and Ahsoka Tano train within. Yep. Uh, if you're looking for kind of a historical frame of reference, but it starts many millennia before them. Basically, it's a monastic peacekeeping organization, unified by its belief in the Force and the favoritism of the light side. It is led by a series of Jedi councils, kind of like we saw earlier. And during this time in Jedi history, the Sith Order crops up for the first time. What's the Sith Order? Well, the Sith Order is the dark side's answer to the Jedi. If you want to hear more about the Sith, request an episode. The old Jedi Order existed for many, many hundreds of millennia. But they hundreds, had, wow. It, oh my gosh. Long so time. So many, A long, long time ago. There were so many millennia. And um, they had several great schisms, whereas the Jedi E only had that one great schism yep. that kind of ultimately destroyed them and necessitated this next part in their history. Okay. During these schisms, several groups of Jedi broke away and formed rogue sects. Uh-oh. Um, because they held different beliefs on the way that the Force should be wielded. And the Jedi that held the traditional beliefs, um, kind of the Jedi that we know from the movies, uh-huh. uh, are sometimes referred to as, quote, Orthodox Jedi, unquote. Orthodox Jedi. Yeah, oh, right. like your Orthodox Jews. Okay. Uh, by these rogue sects. Okay. We're not going to talk too much about them, but it's important to know that they existed. And we that, want our lightsabers to be yellow. That's nuts. Um, it's it's basically <laughs> like this is your uh, this is your like Pentecostal church and your Church uh, of England okay. cropping up amongst Catholicism. It makes sense. It would happen though. Um, also, fun fact about lightsabers: um, that in, since you brought up yellow lightsabers, lightsabers can be any color. Yep. And although we think of blue and green and purple being traditionally Jedi and like red, there's a story behind Mace Windu's purple lightsaber. Uh, there is red being traditionally um, Sith color. The colors do not define your your kind of affiliation within the force. Nope. There can be white lightsabers. There can be black lightsabers. Yep. It all depends on the crystals that are in your lightsaber. Initially, uh, George Lucas only wanted the lightsabers to be red or blue. Yes, he did. And I totally understand that for the time period uh-huh. um, and for the technology that they were under, but it has kind of since been debunked and your lightsaber can be whatever color you want it to be. It's also better for marketing. It is also way better for marketing. <laughs> uh, so these disagreements between the light side of the force, kind of fight infighting within, led to several aforementioned wars, including a period of time known as the Hundred Year Darkness. Um, uh, oh, after the Hundred Year Darkness, it, basically they fought. Okay, just don't worry about it. Defectors from the Orthodox Jedi were banished to the Sith Empire, so they were like, "Hey." You're too different from us. You have to go be a Sith. We cannot have this infighting. We cannot stand for it. Really? Yes. Okay. And then kind of some ambiguous amount of time later, um, the Sith became known to the Galactic Republic because the Jedi were working with the Galactic Republic and the Sith were like, hey, um, we don't like you. And then the Galactic Republic were like, um, we don't take too kindly to your existence either. And so then they had a war called the Great Hyperspace War. Oh, that's a cool name for a war. Yeah, it's the best name of the many wars we're about to talk about. Oh, man, Jedi, get better about naming your wars. Come on, guys. Uh, The greatest conflict during the Great Hyperspace War was the Sith invasion of Coruscant. Okay. During which the Jedi Guardian, Anivis Fogg... Sure. And the Jedi Master Mehmet Nadil successfully defended the entire planet on their own and defeated the invading Sith. Well done, guys. Well done. Um, they are sufficiently badass. They are both alien. They are not. They're humanoid, but they are not humans. There's lots of cool pictures of them online. They've not appeared in a video game. However, 
The Sith were repeatedly reborn from within the Jedi Order. So Jedis kept cropping up and turning over and becoming Sith and becoming Sith over the next thousand years or so. And so the Sith Order, no matter how many times it was kind of batted down, kept reforming and kept growing. During these thousand years, the Great Sith War happened. There's another. Well, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, we're like three thousand years along right now, <laughs> which was uh, one of the first Jedi conflicts that involved the Mandalorians. Oh yes, the Mandalorians, which are the the tribe or the trait or the planet that where Boba Fett gets his armor. And Sabine Wren. Yeah, and Sabine Wren. Um, the Mandalorians have enough history to be a lesson on their own. So it's just kind of important to know that this is when they were folded into Jedi history. It was during the Great Sith War. Following the Great Sith War, the Sith were able to manipulate the Mandalorians into joining up with their side and attacking the, attacking the Galactic Republic. Um, this kind of leads to why later on in the movies you see Boba Fett kind of siding with Darth Vader. Yep. Mandalorians aren't necessarily going to side with the Sith, but as a society, they tend to. So a character like Sabine Wren, who's a Mandalorian that crops up in Star Wars Rebels TV series, allies herself with the Jedi. She's kind of the odd lady out in doing that. Yep. So this, excuse me, this alliance caused uh, another war between the Sith and the Galactic Republic. And the Jedi Council at this time ruled that no member of their order was going to enter into this war. Because they were like, this is between the Galactic Empire and the Sith fighting over... The Galactic Empire. Or the Galactic Republic, I'm so sorry. Okay, I was like, what? There's another another empire? There are so many galactic things. (laughs) No, it's the Galactic Republic. So the Galactic Republic didn't like the fact that the Mandalorians were siding with the Sith. They wanted the the Mandalorians to side with them. So they went to war with the Sith over who got to have the Mandalorians. Mm. Uh, And the Jedi were like, we don't need to be a part of this. Interesting. We're good. However... Two Jedi named Alec and Ravon, or Revan, um, characters that actually do appear in Knights of the Old Republic, garnered notoriety amongst the Jedi when they entered into the war on the side of the Galactic Republic. Although both eventually turned to the dark side, and Alec changed his name to Darth Malak. Darth Malak. And he is referred to in some of the comics and stuff. Okay, interesting. Um, Ravon seduced many Jedi to the dark side, with his teachings and left the Jedi numbering less than a hundred by the time of his death. Whoa! So he got as cl- he got as close as Palpatine did. Yeah, yeah. He was he was a sexy Sith master who seduced yes. many people over to the, the dark, dark side. side. Uh, in a reactionary move, the Jedi Council disbanded their order. Oh. And many of the remaining Jedi were folded into the Sith, um, which at the time was kind of ruled over by a character named Darth Nihilus. That name sort of sounds familiar. To me. He, again, it's a name that you hear a lot, kind uh-huh. of bandied around. And I'm assuming since these other two Sith were in the Old Republic, he probably crops up in some of the games. Sure. I've not played the Star Wars games, so someone's going to tell me. I've not played the Star Wars games. So I can't game. <laughs> However, female human Jedi Knight Mitra Surik. Yes, Surik. Defeated the Sith Triumvirate. Take that. The Sith Triumvirate was made up of Darth Nihilus, Darth Sion, and Darth Tarya. They were the three most powerful Sith at the time. Uh This awesome lady, Mitra, came in and murdered them. Mitra Surik then went on to reform the Jedi Order with the help of all of the lost Jedi who were kind of scattered across the galaxy. Good going, Since Mitra. they've been dismantled. So she's really cool. There's a lot of really cool fan art of her online. Oh, cool. I saved a bunch of it to my computer. (laughs) 300 years following uh, Mitra Surik's victory... The Sith were again strong enough to challenge the Jedi for control of the galaxy. Oh, come on, Jedi. Uh, and so they did. Yeah, the Jedi is really good at like beating the Sith back, but they can never wipe them out. Yeah. The initial onslaught saw over half of the Galactic Republic fall into the hands of the Sith. Oh, good Lord. Because there's kind of like there's the inner rim, the middle rim and the outer the rim outer territories. Rim, yep. So the, Tata- Tatooine is in the outer rim. Yes, it is. They, they tend to be the more rogue planets. Uh, the Jedi managed to hold their ground at the middle rim. So, again, they only took over about half of it. So the middle rim, Jedi's holding them back. The Sith negotiated a peace with the Republic. And they used their lower defenses to once again attack Coruscant oh, and capture it. Good God. <laughs> it must, Coruscant is like the Gotham City of Star Wars. It just falls every it other just, which yeah, way. Yeah, you're just like, why would you live there? Yeah. I mean, unless you're a Jedi, I don't understand. The Sith extorted the Republic into signing the Treaty of Coruscant, which heavily favored the growing Galactic Empire. They're 
Galactic their Galactic Empire. Empire. Not, not, not the, the Empire. No, but yes. their, the, the Empire. Um, this began a period of time known as the Cold War, which is kind of exactly what you would expect for a Cold War. Nobody really fought, but there was a lot of tension. It lasts for... A lot of arguments and debates. Yeah, yeah. It lasts for about 20 years. Following that was another war, after which the Republic emerged victorious and the Sith were battled back. Okay, okay. Centuries later... Centuries later. The war between the Sith and the Jedi erupted. Another one. Yeah, another one. Woo! Well, this is like the war okay, until this- the movies. Um, the Jedi were led by a character named Lord Hoth, okay. who famously said, I dreamt that I would single-handedly defeat the dark side, that I would make a difference, change the galaxy. The galaxy, however, has changed me. Um, he is the focus of the Dark Horse comic series Jedi vs. Sith. Interesting. Um, and he's kind of a big deal. Okay, he's a big deal. I, I believe you. Yeah, he's a Lord big Hoth. Deal he gets Jedi. a whole planet named after him. Oh, that's where that comes yeah, that's from. That's where that comes. Ah. They, they kind of retconned it. That so Lord Hoth and the Jedi eventually pushed back the Sith to a planet called Rusan, R U S S A N, which is a, again a middle rim planet. Got it. Where they had several battles that ended with the presumed defeat of the Sith. All right. However, oh no, one Sith survived. I think. Can I? Can I make a guess? You can make a guess. Darth Bane. Yes, the creator of the Rule of Two. Yep. Jason, what's the Rule of Two? The Rule of Two is a Sith rule where there can only ever be two Sith. And Darth Bane instituted this rule because he thought that the reason they lost was because the Sith fought against themselves. Because Sith always want to be in power. So there should only be two Sith, a master and an apprentice. Yes. And that's something that you see played out in the Star Wars Rebels TV show and in, in the movies. Yep. You're like, well, the Sith are sure powerful for there only being one slash two of them. Uh, So once it survived, Darth Bane, he reformed the Sith Empire, which is kind of the empire as we know it. Um, in the movies, mm, not really. But well, sure. that's what it, that's what it that's what it starts. Because the empire we know in the movies is basically the Republic. It is. Uh, <laughs> but this is kind of the beginning of the Sith folding the Republic, or the, the Sith trying to take over the Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're kind of ruling over. They're the like, Republic. let's stop making our own little thing. Like, actually, take over what we got. Yes, and and he, Darth Bane, was able to achieve this by basically like skulking around in the shadows and keeping out of the Jedi's way. The shadows. And um, he really impress this upon all of his followers that if you want to be you know his one apprentice at a time and then they kept dying and then because well, he, he killed all the rest of the sith right he did is that right yeah yeah, yes. yeah. so he's like he made where he was the only one left <laughs> yeah yeah basically he's like you guys did it <laughs> and then he yeah and then he took a bunch of like apprentices and then kind of murdered them and then yeah. eventually he was murdered but yep. the way that they came to power as we know them in the movies is by is by remaining hidden and remaining out of the jedi's focus because uh if you didn't notice from like the 20 wars we just talked about uh, the Jedi and the Sith, again, it's this idea of balance in the Force. The light and the dark, one of them will re- will emerge victorious ultimately in that schism. But the other one always just keeps cropping up, cropping up, cropping up, because you need balance in the Force. Yep. That's why we need Anakin, I guess. Um, so <laughs> I guess I have feelings about Anakin Skywalker. All right, we'll talk about him <laughs> millennia later. <laughs> the Sith revealed themselves. They were like, "Ha ha 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 ha!" We've been here a long time, and they caused a separatist crisis that put into motion the events of the Star Wars prequel trilogy. They caused the beginning of the separatist crisis. Is basically the Jedi. It's the Battle of Naboo. It is. It's the. It's okay. So it's episode. We're we're up to Star Wars Episode One, and that's where they they convinced the Trade Federation to blockade. Naboo. Naboo, which mm-hmm. is interesting because that's Palpatine's home planet. It is, which is weird because you're like, where did you live here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then leads to the Separatists building all the battle droids that fight the Republic and cause causes the the Clone Wars. Yes. So by Darth Sidious. By Darth Sidious. Yes. Um, who is Emperor? Pa- who eventually becomes Emperor Palpatine? Yeah. So if you'll notice, like by this point in Jedi history, we're basically butting up against the the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Yes. It's also interesting too. Just a weird note. You're talking about the Sith hiding from Bane because Bane is what? How how far ahead of the prequels would you would you guess Bane is? Um. A thousand years. Okay, that's that's what I would say too. Two thousand years. Because in those Jedi Apprentice books that I mentioned that I read like a long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. In that book, and in Episode One, they kind of give us impression too. Mm-hmm. They give the impression that it's been a couple hundred years since any Jedi has seen a Sith. Right, and that's the argument that um, is kind of made 
a, not only about the prequel trilogy, but about the way that the Jedi act, because everyone criticizes the prequel trilogy, rightly so, for it being a lot of like politics and like trade negotiations. Yeah. And the Jedi are all kind of like have sticks up their butts yeah. and they're not very interesting, but they become complacent because for thousands of years they've not been challenged. No. So they become these, again, like monastic yeah, yeah. kind of peacekeeping and I, order. And I can remember reading some other book, too, during episode one, where it talked about the first battle that Qui-Gon fought with Darth Maul on mm-hmm. Tatooine. And it talked about that that was like the first time in his entire life that Qui-Gon had ever fought somebody with a lightsaber that wasn't a Jedi and wasn't during training. Right. And um, the Jedi, if you'll and I think you can you can probably notice this just from looking at the movies, uh, aesthetically, all of their. Um, lightsabers are very similar. Yeah. They're all kind of a single blade. Sometimes they'll have a different handle. The Sith, when they reappear, Darth Maul. They go crazy. Um, they very much converge away from the idea of the traditional lightsaber. And one of the interesting things that I think is that, okay, so you have Darth Maul with your two-bladed lightsaber. We know that Kylo Ren has this kind of um, broad sword design. Dooku's is curved. Dooku's is curved. You don't see that almost anywhere in the Jedi Order. But Darth Vader who was a Jedi, was a Jedi and was a a great Jedi. I mean, arguably, but was a great Jedi has the traditional Jedi lightsaber. Yep. Um, And he's able to be taken down by someone wielding a traditional Jedi Jedi lightsaber, lightsaber, um, which is something that I think is very, very interesting. So, so let's say for the sake of argument that Darth Bane is 2000 years before these events. Hey, Ashley, Darth Bane is 2000 years before these events. Right. Yoda Oh, Yoda. You mean Yoda. Is born about 900 years before these events. 900 so Yoda, years of council I've kept. Yoda mm. comes around about halfway between Darth Bane and the beginning of the Rule of Two and the the building of the Sith Empire into what we know it as. <laughs> and, um, and the prequel trilogy. Well, yes. 800 years, 900 years, kind of. Depending on if you believe Yoda, what he says about his age. Right, 800. When 900 years you are, mm-hmm. not look as good, you will not. Right. Hmm. But we don't know if he's actually 900 years or if he's like 850. No. Is he rounding up, Lie rounding to you, down? Yoda. Lie to you, Yoda, is not. He might. No. He's like the doctor. Mm. Um, so, our, you know, <laughs> let's say around, he's about 1,000 years before these events. You know, if we're, if, if we're rounding up in, Sounds in, in true. the number of the, in the numbers does. of the universe. When he was originally born, they didn't think he was force sensitive. Interesting. So he actually, uh, like Luke, like Anakin, like Obi-Wan, started his uh, Jedi training later in life. And it took him 800 years to get that stick out of his butt uh, and, not, and not and not be so like, because he was so against Luke. He was like, he is too old, too old to begin so training. against Anakin, too. Yeah. To be fair, though, Luke is a gigantic dick to Yoda. <laughs> well, careful. We, careful with the kitties. <laughs> kitties, can, we can say that. That's not a swear word. Sorry, kitties. <laughs> uh, Luke's really mean to Yoda. He is. Um, he is. So he so deserves, is Anakin. So, so is, Anakin. is Anakin. But Luke deserves all the attitude and all the yep. shade that Yoda throws at him. So he starts his um, his Jedi training really late. Um, he eventually becomes a Padawan to a guy named Master Gormo, which is a terrible name. Master Gormo. He becomes a Jedi Master by the age of 96. Oh, cool. So again, a little bit later in, uh, in your life. But he has a really long lifespan. Um, he takes on a bunch of apprentices. One of his appre- notable apprentices is Count Dooku, who yep. eventually turns to the dark side. Uh-huh. He becomes elected to the High Council, Jedi High Council, where he basically presides until the Jedi fall. Sit in a chair, I do. And by the time the Jedi falls... Um, at the end of Return of the, uh, Revenge of the Sith. Well, let's talk about some other cool. Hey, 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 oh, no. sorry, sorry. He's, he's eight hundred years old. He's eight hundred years old. Okay. So, so episode three, Revenge of the Sith. He's eight hundred mm-hmm. years old. Let's talk about. Like, there's one of the cool thing that I learned about the Jedi. Oh, uh, please. That I want to teach you. That I, I was googling. Um, do you know who was the youngest person to ever be elected to the Jedi Council? No. Mace Windu. Maybe I did know that. At the age of 28. Wow. And also, I. So it's kind of like being president. Like, you're basically going to be if, in human years. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be like 40. Well, it's interesting because Mace Windu is a human. Uh, um, but it's interesting, too. Like, I, I was looking through his because we were trying to figure out why his lightsaber is purple. And it's because he he got this special crystal from some tribe on a planet somewhere. It's because Samuel Jackson wanted a purple lightsaber. Yes. <laughs> but, but let's go in canon. Sure. <laughs> um, 
And apparently Mace Windu is the only master in all of the Jedi Order that he mastered all seven forms of lightsaber combat. Yep, that's true. Including the most difficult, which is called Vapod. Uh, um, and in fact, it, it was said when sparring, the only two people that have ever been able to beat him was Dooku, his friend, mm-hmm. and Yoda. Yeah, that's the thing that I don't think they stressed enough during the prequels. I thought was very interesting is that uh, Mace Windu and Dooku are contemporaries. Yeah, they are. They are. They very much are. It, 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 and it, I don't know. I always thought that was interesting that there was a there was a human on the council and that he because to me it would be very difficult for a human. And there's also a part of me just this is going down before Please. you. I always thought it was weird in episode three that Obi Wan was on the council. Like I sort well, of well, a lot of people died. That's what I. That's what I give it to. I think a lot of people died during I, Clone Wars. Yes, Yoda was like, "Hmm, empty chair. We have need Obi Wan. We do." Yeah, basically. <laughs> I also think they don't do a very good job at um, explaining to you like how amazing Mace Windu is. Yes. Um, and if you don't dive into some of this extended universe stuff that I think is called Legacy now. Um, you're never going to know that. And Samuel Jackson, I think, is a little bit wasted in that casting choice, he too. And, and again, um, the original trilogy gets a lot of uh, criticism for the way it treats women and characters of color. You can kind of just chalk that up to the time period. So they've done this amazing thing in the prequel trilogy by making one of the most powerful Jedi is not only a human. The second most powerful Jedi of all time. But is black. Yeah. And like they could have done. Only the puppet is better. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he's CG at that point. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, which that Yoda puppet still holds up better than the CG. It still holds up, like man. so good. Okay, so we're in episode three times now. We're in episode three times now, and that's like all we're going to talk about. Okay, so the clone. Uh, well, let's just, let's just finish it out. So the the Clone Wars happened. The, the Clone Wars happened. The Clone Wars end. Uh, Anakin wants Emperor Palpatine or he's not Emperor Palpatine he's Chancellor Palpatine to help him he finds out Palpatine's a Sith Lord and he's like hey man I know you're having these crazy dreams about your baby mama I can help you oh my god yeah and Mace Windu and Palpatine get into a fight Windu kicks his ass yes he does and only because of Anakin's distraction is is Palpatine able to kill Mace Windu they kind of take Mace Windu out Really crappily. But I, I agree with you, but I like that because I do like that Mace, like Mace Windu was able to just like kick his butt. But I think, I also think that I would have accepted it more because Palpatine is only able to achieve that with Anakin's help if I'd liked the actor playing Anakin more. I get that. I get, and, and, I get and, that. And like Anakin for me is a character that I have a hard time, like I can get behind Darth Vader, but Anakin is difficult for me because I don't like his his portrayal in the movies. Got it, got it, got you it. Know? Um, so so that, by that point, I'm just like, die, oh my God. Yeah, so after that, uh, Palpatine uh, enacts Order 66, which is embedded in all the clone troopers. All the clone troopers kill all the Jedi. Now at the time... But we, they leave the younglings. Well, well, Anakin kills most anybody in the temple. Right, but I think it's interesting that, um, that the, the clone troopers are... Their order is kill all Jedi. They don't kill any of the Padawans. They don't kill the Initiates, and they don't kill the younglings. Oh, so they get away. Uh, they try to get away. Okay, but but okay. But anyways, but at the time, I guess from the original trilogy, the idea is that only Yoda and only Obi Wan made it out. Yes. But from yeah. Rebels and all these other things, we are finding out that more and more and more Jedi's got out than we thought, which is a is a nix for me because like it's the same thing as like Superman is supposed to be the last Kryptonian, mm-hmm. but yet we keep introducing all these other Kryptonians that survived. Well hey, I get it from the standpoint that somebody goes to you and says, I'm gonna give you money to make a Star Wars T V show. We gotta have a lightsaber. You have to have a Jedi. Um I don't accept it into my head canon. No, I don't either. Um and I and I like Rebels. Yep. You know, but for me, like that Ezra character and um Kanan who was a Padawan? Who was a Padawan, was a Padawan during Order sixty six? Um, they don't make it out. They don't exist. No, in my head, they don't. And I, 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 I can get behind the idea that there are going to be more force sensitive people who are obviously born during that downtime. Um, but if you don't make Luke the only one, then it, it, it takes it away what's special about that story. And because Star Wars is a space opera, that's what it has to be. Mm. Like ah- ah- Ahsoka is my favorite Star Wars character. Um, and she's Anakin's Padawan from the Clone Wars um, TV show. I'll accept the fact that... And she makes it out before the end of the Clone Wars TV show. Which is before or the yep, order before is enacted. Six, yep. um, so I'll, I'll buy that she gets out, but she has to die yep. before A New Hope. That's what I think, too. She has to die. Um, 
you know, she's kind of has to be that sacrificial lamb or she has to go into hiding forever and never come out. Which but, makes no sense. Which makes no sense. But because Darth Vader gets to be as powerful as he is, he would know. Yeah. And he would hunt her down. Yeah. Or she would come out when she sensed Luke. Yeah. Yes. Or Yoda or or, or or Leia. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, whether or not Leia turns out to become a Jedi, you know, I'm sure we're going to know when the movie comes out. I bet not. I bet not as well. But she's force sensitive. Yeah. So... Uh, they would know. Like yeah. you could, you could sense that. Okay, so we're past already sixty six. The Jedi Temple is burning. All the Jedi are gone. Anakin kills all the children. <laughs> Anakin kills all the children. He becomes Darth Vader. Yes. Uh, and then you have your you have your better Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> and then you have um, Luke, Luke. You basically have the New Order, the new so, Jedi Order. So Luke, Luke, Luke Skywalker, son of Anakin Skywalker, the guy who basically started us down this path. Yep. Uh, he uh, um, he starts your new Jedi Order. And um, that's going to be all flushed out in your Force Awakens. Yes, and then so we don't need to cover anything in Rebels. Um, you know, okay. So Rebels is about a group of rebels, and there's some there's some Jedi there. Got it. Um, but again, like that is a, the reason I didn't want to talk about Rebels too much is because a it's not finished yet, so we don't quite know the whole story there, and b. Um, I don't know how much this new quote new extended universe yep. is gonna Change matter it. at all because we've already if you see the new Star the excuse me the original Star Wars trilogy they're not there so it doesn't matter got it you know that's kind of what it all comes down to it's not in the movies it, it doesn't matter it's not in the movies it doesn't matter like I can tell you that um, Kanan's a Padawan who escaped mm-hmm. uh, he has grown up by this point he's not done training but he's ostensibly a Jedi Knight he's, he's pretty close Slash Jedi Master, uh, he finds a no, force. No, he's, he's nowhere close to a master. I know, but he's supposed. Masters are supposed to be the ones who train Padawans. He takes this character, this force sensitive boy Ezra, on as a Padawan. I get it. I get it. He's yeah, yeah. technically supposed to be a master. Um, and they try to go on and help Ahsoka um, take down the Empire. Okay, so that's basically it for the Jedi Order, then. Yeah. Yay! That's a lot of wars. <laughs> yes, keep this council on this Jedi Order. I do. Yes. Hmm. Um, so recommended viewing and reading is usually what we talk about next. Um, I think that's pretty self-sufficient. Uh, I would say the recommended reading is Star Wars Jedi Apprentice. I'm going to Google that just to make sure it's the right one. But it is all about Obi-Wan becoming the Padawan mm-hmm. of Qui-Gon. And it's, uh, they're, they're kids books. They're scholastic books. But doesn't I, mean they're not valuable. I remember liking them. Um, and while Jason's Googling that, I would, was going to recommend, I mean, aside from the original yes, Jedi trilogy, Apprentice. There you go, Jedi Apprentice. Um, I was going to recommend the uh, Star Wars Clone Wars TV shows in both of their incarnations because I think yep. they do a good job at showing you what is great about the Jedi, but what, also what stagnated the Jedi. And also, I think the Clone Wars series is almost better than any of the prequels movies. And actually, I think so. it explains to you more why the Jedi Order failed. Yes. Than the prequels ever did. And it has Ahsoka Tano in it, and she's the best Star Wars uh, character ever. Cool. So that's it. Now we're going to move. Thank you. Oh, oh guys, guys. Now we're going to move into the discussion part of our podcast. Jason, tell us about discussion. Well, if you know anything about the Jedi Order, you know the Jedi Order is not one person. That's true. It's a council of many. That's true. And so we called upon an expert, a guy who loves Star Wars and Star Trek and knows a lot about the Jedi. And we wanted to talk to him about all things Jedi. You know him from his top 10 podcast, The Schmoes Know, and his podcast, uh, uh, cast of characters. I'm talking about the great John Roca. So, John. Yes. Would you consider yourself to be an expert of the Jedi? Uh, I would say, what's the rank below expert? And then I would say yes. Professional hobbyist? Sure, professional <laughs> hobbyist, yes. <laughs> I mean, hosting the podcast on Far, Far Away, like you were so inundated with so much of that stuff. So you've got to learn so many things. So yeah, I would say, I, I would hesitate to call myself expert. That's more Harloff's territory, but I would say close enough. Well, we wanted to talk about Jedi training. Yeah. And what about Jedi training specifically, Ashley? Do we think that, because we talked about it a little bit earlier, that Luke... Because he's kind of our ultimate Jedi character. Yeah, yeah. Do we think that with his weird cobbled together four days of Jedi training? Yeah, four he, days over three years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> could he actually achieve the Jedi knight you know, status? Jedi knight status yeah. that we see him in Return of the Jedi. 
Oh, you mean between Empire and Return of the Jedi? Yeah. Yeah. How did he achieve this? Yes, black <laughs> badass <laughs> level of uh, yeah. Because I mean, how long yeah. would you say he was on Dagobah? Oh, probably four days. Yeah, like four uh, days four day sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he had <laughs> let's say maybe a day. With, or yeah. we're, well, let's give him some travel. Let's say three days with Obi Wan. He was a quick learner, though, wasn't yeah. he? I mean, like he was levitating an X wing within yeah. two or three yeah. days. But it so. took him a really long time in uh, A New Hope to kind of get the deal with the droid yeah. and the blast shield. Right. Like mm-hmm. that was a really slow process. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, I think he's like. It's like going from your 20s to your 30s, all of a sudden things are a lot quicker. You, you just grab things a lot quicker. Uh-huh. You know, your mind kind of develops. And so you're like, okay, I can grab it. I can, I can figure it out. But yeah, I would say I'm hoping you fill in the holes between Empire and Jedi and that he went back and trained with Yoda and trained and those <laughs> kind of stuff. You would hope. Well, there's some there's some extra canon stuff, especially in this book called Shadows of the Empire, which yeah. I enjoy. Oh, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. video game. Like yeah. And they state in that that he goes back to Ben Kenobi's hut mm. and finds like his journal. Oh, right. Yeah. And and that's how like he builds his green light. It's like lightsaber. Jedi night yeah. school. Yeah. But but, 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 <laughs> but but think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. OK. So yeah. let's say. um Let's say we all wanted to learn Cav McGraw. Yeah. And our only source of Cav McGraw was um, our friend was able to teach it to us for five days. And we watched a lot of Arrow. We, we watched a lot of Arrow. <laughs> and then we have a book, The Dummy's Guide to Cav McGraw. <laughs> In a year. I think it's Cav McGraw. We, oh, oh, am yeah, I saying it wrong? Yeah, yeah. My bad. My That's bad. Right. Apologies to all those people out there. Because <laughs> I know some nerds. To going, all, all the people of Krav Israel. Maga. <laughs> yeah. So let's say. Um, yeah, Israel, right. We, so we, we have a year and we only have the textbook. <laughs> Would we yeah. be, would be we would we be experts? I think not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things that fuels the the rumors now about Luke might be evil in Force Awakens, or he mm-hmm. might be tending towards dark side. Yep. Because Yoda even gives that warning out, like mm-hmm. he's leaving too early in Empire mm-hmm. from the training, and he may me use that training in in the wrong ways. Mm-hmm. And even in in Jedi, he almost gives in right when he's yeah. fighting the Emperor. He has that moment of anger where mm-hmm. he flashes. He never he doesn't fully give in, but he has it within him, you know. And I think the best Jedi do and they have that anger and they can so, tap the emotion yeah yeah, yeah and I th- and I so I would say he, he probably trained himself to the point that he trains him but still he ends up like what we're here in Force Awakens is he's out in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. you know supposedly in a cave so he's disappeared yeah, yeah yeah there must be reasons for that so from what we see of the prequel trilogy I want to ask the two of you yeah do you think okay so you're taken away from your mom when you're three. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're taken to some weird temple. I don't know. I really like my mom. A, a, green, a, gr- a green Muppet <laughs> talks to you for a while. Sure, sure. You know, you wear blast shield helmets and you you fight the little blast the droid thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, then eventually maybe you get to work with Ian McGregor or or Liam Neeson, depending, right. depending on how it goes. Yeah. Um, and then you're on your own. Could you guys make it through the Jedi Temple? What do you think, John? Could if you do it? I, if, we're, if, we're, if we're using Ewan McGregor, or Lee, I, I could make it if Liam Neeson was my teacher. Okay. If the Ewan McGregor version of Kenobi, who himself was still learning to be a Jedi, mm-hmm. that would be, a, I don't know if I would make it in the end. You think you'd fall just like Anakin? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I, think be, I think there's certainly more possibility there than there was with, with Liam. What do you think, Ashley? Um, I think I would be a really, really crappy Jedi because I have a lot of feelings and uh, I'm not good at harnessing my feelings. <laughs> in any useful kind of way. Um, and I really like my mom. So I don't know if I could give my mom up for a, a green Muppet. I really don't. But you're really smart. So you I could so. you could adapt quickly <laughs> to the feeling situation. Because if it's like, if I don't do this, I'm dead. You would figure it out. Like, I love kill myself. The younglings. Well, no, I mean like against a Sith Lord if you catch sure. yourself. Sure. If, if I get that far, right. maybe. Like poor Ezra in Rebels. So he, he oh my Vader. God. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also like he's another aspect. He's just like Luke where you look at like, yeah. man, his training is going to be oh, yeah. so uneven and all oh. over the place. Well, he's haphazard. basically being trained by a Padawan because yeah. Kanan yeah. didn't even achieve Jedi Knight status. Right. And and he admits several times, I think, to the character's credit, I'm not like sure what I'm doing here, yeah. but we're gonna try really hard, and <laughs> maybe it'll be okay. It's amazing how many self-trained Jedi there are in yeah. the Jedi yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. order, right? All the greatest Jedi um, are either self-taught or have non-traditional training. Yoda, right. Obi Wan, yep. Ahsoka, which I think is just super interesting yeah. that you've like made these like little Mary Sue characters yeah. in this very strict kind of religious sect. Yeah. So overall, do we think the Sith are Better? Is that what we're saying here? Like no. we just think the Sith are the Sith got it, you know, got it down right. Like they, I think the Sith are more accepting. <laughs> yeah. I also think the Sith, the downfall of the Sith is always that they have to consume each other. They're like mm-hmm. snakes in a pit. They mm-hmm. have to consume each other eventually because there's so much uh, suspicion and mm-hmm. trying to finagle to be the number one person. That's what always kills them, you mm-hmm. know. And that's why the Jedi can always slide in and because they don't they work together as opposed to trying to destroy each other. But the Jedi have a, have a big problem of being stagnant. Yeah, which is interesting. That's true. Very stagnant. Yeah, I mean, it's the what's what's what Palpatine 
become a snake and like kill him from the yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, okay, they're too so, trusting. Yes, I yeah, agree. they're very too trusting. Okay, so we. I think I would make it through Jedi training. I think you. I think you would be like I a would really be, good Jedi. I'd, I'd be, be Obi Wan Kenobi. I'd you be finally. Yeah, you'd, be, yeah. you'd be a little cocky Jedi. I know. I could see I would. that. I, you, I'd be you, a little cocky. I could see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah you'd, that. you'd be the Han Solo version of the Jedi. I'd be the Han Solo Jedi. Yeah. I'd be the Qui Gon. I'm the Qui Gon because he's supposed to be cocky. That's the reason why he wasn't on the council. Remember? Yeah. They were, like, they were like, "Oh, you would be on the council." Well, he has a particular <laughs> set of skills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I have a particular set of skills. I mean, I did eight years of army training, so mm. I, I would survive being a Jedi. I just oh, don't know what yeah, kind of Jedi I would be. I can take direction and take okay. orders. It's not easy, no. but I do it. it but was, the Jedi, you have to like... I couldn't be on the council, though. That would, Well, eventually, maybe as I got older, because I, I feel that you would You just have now. to wait until they like slaughtered a bunch of people and then let all like the younger Jedi on, because yeah. because Obi-Wan winds up on the council, and you're like, I don't know if you yeah. really yeah. deserve yeah. to be yeah, we, here. We, we but... argued about this, too. Like We were like, oh, I wonder if Obi-Wan got on the council, because like a bunch of the other Jedis died in the Clone Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They were like, well, we got an open chair. You want to sit down? Order 66 and all that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Come on in. Even more accepting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because also in episode one, there's Yaddle with a yeah. female Yoda. Uh, right. Lady, who's on the council. Muppet. And then she disappears. Yeah. She's gone. She's not in episode two. And you're just like, where did Yaddle go? Right. She went to Dagobah. I think she died. I think she was like a thousand years old. Well, Yoda oh. was like 800 by that point. And Yoda, yeah, that was Yoda's cougar girlfriend. Gross. <laughs> Gross. I think if the Jedi could bribe me to be a Jedi with a droid, though, I might be able to stick it out. Oh, oh yeah. they were like, here's an astromech? If they were like, no. If they were like, here's an R2 unit, I'd be like, oh, now I have to be really good <laughs> to like, earn R2's this. r is an astromech. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> All right. So, final final question. <laughs> what do we think is the most ridiculous part of Jedi training? Like, what's the part that just seems very unrealistic or the, the part that seems so unattainable? Taking a three-year-old child Taking a three-year-old child from your mom. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a good question. That is a really know? good question. Because everything seems to serve a purpose that they show in mm-hmm. all the movies. You know, even the levitating of the X-Wing when he's upside down with mm-hmm. one hand or whatever, all that stuff that he's doing. It's essential to find your balance. It's almost like training, like training, physical training, like mm-hmm. core training, all that kind of jazz mm-hmm. they talk about. Like it's really important. You can't do anything without having a strong core. So it's, it's difficult to see what, what would be useless. Oh, having to know. having to braid your little rat tail. That would probably be the most useless <laughs> yeah. part of Jedi training. I don't know. Building a lightsaber was probably really hard. The Kai bar crystals. Yeah. Going um, to the temple also, because it? of the way physics work, it's probably really mm, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it makes me think of that meme that there's that meme that go, that's going around in from A New Hope yeah. where it has Luke like looking down the hole with the lightsaber and he yeah. like, oh and it's through his and head it's through his yeah yeah I love that meme <laughs> I love that meme well uh, also I mean the Jedi are samurai they're samurai mm-hmm. they're essentially samurai mm-hmm. I mean all this stuff is Kurosawa stuff that, oh, yes, that Lucas it, bit yeah so, totally and, and there's nothing wrong with that it. it's, an, it's, it's a mm-hmm. great usage of it you know and but so to me and I love samurai films so to me I've never found anything they do training wise oh, yeah. useless so I always like I'm I I, can't, I don't know if I have an answer because everything is so fun and totally cool down that with they them. do. All right, you're, yeah. John Rocco's down with the Jedi. I have the way of the samurai at home. So all right, yeah. cool, John. Well, thank you, man, so much for joining us on this Geek History lesson. Thanks. Let everybody, let all our listeners know where they can find you. Oh, yeah, you can always find me at the Roca Says on Twitter and Instagram. That's R-O-C-H-A, and that's my homage to The Rock. And you can see all the shows uh, that I host, uh, both podcasts and on camera for Collider Network. So that's fun stuff. Cool. Well, I hope the force is with you. <laughs> and back to you. Thank you. And I don't think either of us could have said it any better than John Roca. So make sure you go follow him on Twitter. That was a really, really great discussion. Don't you agree, Ashley? I totally agree. Unleash the Roca. Unleash the Roca. That was awesome. So let's move right into the, sadly, the final part of our podcast. Oh, no. Which is the teaching tweet. What's that? And that is where we sum up the lesson in 140 characters or less, if and when we remember to teach it or put it on Twitter. Yes. Uh, Mine is much less than 140 characters. What is it? The Jedi, colon. A lot of war for a philosophical think tank. Hashtag Star Wars so that the little BB-8 head pops up. I think you missed two things. Okay. Hashtag rat tails. Barf. Hashtag beard. Less barf. A lot of Jedis have beards. I, you know what? You know why I think that is? Okay. Um, because, you know, like I said, the monastic peacekeeping organization, a lot of uh, things that are similar to monks or samurai. And with the exception of the Benedictine monks, who are the ones with the weird hair, with, with like the Friar Tuck haircut with, yep. the, with the bald spot, mm-hmm. um, many monks kind of followed that idea that um, your body is what God wants you to be. And they didn't shave. They, had, they wore beards. 
So I think that that's kind of a lot of the human characters when they become masters, they grow the beard. So yes. I think that's sort of a callback to this idea of, um, you know, for a thousand years, the Jedi Knights did not <laughs> shave their faces. But so many thousands of years. Sometimes your beard can be a hive of villainy and scum. Scum and villainy. Gross. Yes. Particularly on Tatooine. Is that it for the podcast? I think so. Oh, cool. Yay. That's exhausting. That's enough. That's a, That should be more than enough to get you Star Wars prep for The Force Awakens. So much force, it's going to force it down your throat with Jedi goodness. That seemed a little violent for no. the Jedi. <laughs> hey, they, you, you just told me about like 27 wars. Yeah, it's true. Okay, I think that's it for this lesson of Geek History Lesson. As always, you can go find us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher. And you can find us on SoundCloud.com slash Geek History Lesson. Go over there. Give us a review. Give us some star ratings help other listeners guys it makes a big difference i love reading those itunes ratings and and especially on soundcloud the comments now you can comment on specific moments where we say things go over there soundcloud.com slash geek history lesson give us some comments go do that ashley where can they find us on social media if they want to request a future lesson like if they're like hey we want to do the history of the sith or Mace Windu, or History of Yoda. Ahsoka, Yoda. Or... <laughs> you mean Yoda? I mean, I mean Ahsoka, really. <laughs> uh, you can go over to geekhistorylesson.com. That's a Tumblr. The likes and ass are open. You can go to facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson. You can message us or comment on our page. You can also find us on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, and you can find Ashley at Ashley V. Robinson. Head on over there. Give us some tweets or some hearts, as they call it now, in the future of oh, the, yeah. the new galaxy of moments. That's it for now. Go buy your movie tickets for Force Awakens, or if you've already seen Force Awakens, you just know that everything we told you is meaningless. <laughs> Ooh, I spent so much time on that. Thank you, Disney. All right, that's it for now. If you want to listen to more Geek History Lesson, don't forget to go over to patreon.com slash and you can hear us talking more about the Jedi. I'm Jason Obi. My beard is so soft. Juan Inman. Wow, I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Ashley, as the oldest professor on this council. Am I? Will you please <laughs> close out this episode with the greatest Jedi epitaph that you could ever give us? Class is dismissed. And may the force be with you. Mm, Yoda, you mean Yoda.